Alright, so here I'm going to be putting together the partial Ursa cart assembly, and this time we have all of the parts that we need, and we're assembling them. So I'm going to go into projects and make sure I have the right project. For this one, we want to go into partial Ursa cart, and it should be right here, partial Ursa cart dot IPJ. So then we're going to go in and do a new assembly. So I've actually got the drawings here on my computer, and I can see that this number seven is its own assembly. So I know that I'm going to be making two assemblies here. So this first one I'm going to call the uh, forearm assembly, and in it I'm going to be putting the forearm part as well as this hex hub which will actually be in imported components. When you import something it makes it, it adds it to the folder imported components that's in the main directory that the project is in and inside that will be the folder where you've got your actual part. So I'm going to place that here. Now to constrain these I can do these the separate several different ways. The first way that I think of doing this is with mate where I can mate these axes and see that constrains it you know this way but we also have to mate it right there and then now we've got this spinning everywhere and now we need to mate these so what I've been doing here is mating the axes and to get that you want to try and click on the inside wall of the cylinder of the hole but if you can't end up getting that for whatever reason you can right click select other and go down until you find the axis that you want. And there. All right, so there, those are fully constrained. However, there's a faster way you can do it with less constraints. I'm just going to control Z. There we go. And that is using the insert constraint. So if I go here, notice that the two different kinds of insert constraints I can do are opposed, where we've got these arrows pointing the opposite directions and aligned, which is where the arrows are lined up. So we see that when I go here to click on this edge, that arrow that's appearing right here is pointing in one direction towards the right side of the screen. And here, this arrow is pointing towards the left side. So using this constraint, the opposed insert constraint, then we've got the arrows going the opposite ways and they line up like that. Whereas if I clicked here, they would line up together like so. But we want it like this, and then we can just go do a mate constraint on these axes, and there we go. This is fully constrained now. So now I've got to do a bolted connection between these parts, because unfortunately in real life we can't just say, alright, this piece, stick to this piece like so, make these axes line up perfectly, there we go, there's our part. In real life we have to use bolts or glue, or hopefully never glue to put things together. So if I go over to the design tab, we're going to do a bolted connection. So the start plane is where the bolts are going to start, and if I look at my drawing here of this part, nope, not this one, this one, we see that the bolts are going through from the inside and the nuts are on the outside. So we're going to start, we're going to put our start plane here, and the circular references are where the holes are. Notice how I click one and it automatically goes to the next field that we have to enter. If I go back and click on the arrow for circular references, then I can add more or take away more. Just got to keep clicking back. And then termination is where that ends. That's where the, if we add on nuts, that's where the nuts will start as well. So here we've got our, our fields set up so to speak. We've got the uh, start plane, circular references, termination plane, which is everything it needs to know. Now we have to put in the bolts. So if we go click to add a fastener, usually your computer will be pretty slow opening this up first time. We're going to go back over here to see what kind of bolt we want. So it looks like bolt is number three, which is an ASI B18.3 number 10, 24 UNC half inch hexagon socket hex or head cap screw. Also just right here. So to find this bolt that I want, oh, where'd that little window go? We're gonna go back to select a fastener. 
So we can narrow it down to ANSI here. And here we can go socket head bolts. And now we're just looking for the one that we want. And I think that this is the one I'm going to go with. Well, no, that's metric. Um, well, really here, you're just going to try and find the one that matches it best. Because in real life, you're going to end up using whatever bolt fits, really. Um, here, we don't actually want a washer, so we're not going to click that middle one. Instead, we're going to click this end one, which now we can say, all right, we want a nut. And we'll just go ahead and use this nut here. And there we go. Click apply. OK. And loading, loading, loading. There we go. Now we've got nuts and bolts in there. And now this forearm assembly is done. So I'm going to save that. Notice that if we go into this uh, folder, we've now got this folder that's named the same thing as the assembly. And in there will be design accelerator bolted, bolted connection 1.iam. When you're, if you're using Perforce like we do in our robotics team, you have to make sure that you upload this folder as well because otherwise that bolted connection won't appear in the design and it will give you a bunch of errors. So I'm going to save that and go on to make my next assembly. And I'll cover that in the next video.